Welcome to Hardly Tech. Today's video will focus on 1080p gaming performance with the 1080 Ti, the 2080 Super, and the 3060 Ti, and we'll be using the 1080 Ti as the baseline for comparison. Unfortunately, I won't be testing ray tracing today, but that video is coming in the future, so keep your eyes peeled. With the recent release of the 3060 Ti and the performance comparison between the 1080 Ti and the 3080 Ti, it got me wondering, at $400 MSRP, of course, is a 3060 Ti a good option for people? Will it offer extra performance over the 1080 Ti? And if I'm comparing these, why not throw in the 2080 Super since it's in the same performance bracket as the 1080 Ti? The 1080 Ti and the 2080 Super both released at about a $700 MSRP and the 3060 Ti released at a $400 MSRP. Of course, prices have been inflated since the 10 series, so getting these at a fair price may be difficult, but I think this is a good comparison. I think it will be interesting to see what two generations of GPUs across about four years will do for this GPU, considering how good the 1080 Ti was for so long, and still today, honestly. So let's see if this has anything to offer consumers. With all of that out of the way, let's get to the testing. Here are the system specs. And today's games will be Borderlands 3, F1 2019, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Far Cry 5, and Metro Exodus. First up is Borderlands 3. Don't get between me and my gun, heretic! Here in Borderlands 3, we're seeing about a 2 to 3 frame per second lead for the 3060 Ti. However, at times the 1080 Ti actually maintains that same lead, so it's kind of back and forth. And the 2080 Super seems to be maintaining about a 4 to 5 frame per second lead across the test. Alright, let's move on to F1 2019.
Here in F1 2019, we're seeing about a 3 to 7% increase in performance on average in favor of the 3060 Ti. However, at the beginning of the race, the 1080 Ti actually has a sizable performance lead. I'm not really sure what's causing this, but I had a similar result during RAM testing. Not counting the very beginning of the test, the 2080 Super maintains about a 7 to 12% lead over the 1080 Ti. Up next, Far Cry 5. Far Cry 5 shakes things up a little bit. The 1080 Ti actually maintains about a 5 frame per second lead over the 3060 Ti for basically the whole test. There are a few instances where the 3060 Ti comes very close, and the 2080 Super maintains about a 7 to 10 frame per second lead over the 1080 Ti's best. Let's turn down the lights for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Get 
Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a little bit harder to pin down an exact frame rate difference, but on average there's about a 5 to 7 frame per second increase in performance going from the 1080 Ti to the 3060 Ti, at times closer to 10 frames, and the 2080 Super maintaining about that same level of performance above the 3060 Ti. Mind you, this is on average. There are instances where the cards are much closer and much further apart. And lastly, we have Metro Exodus. Here in Metro Exodus, the 1080 Ti and the 3060 Ti see almost exactly the same performance. At a couple of points during this test, the 3060 Ti maintains about a 2 to 3 frame per second increase, but not for very long. The 2080 Super, on the other hand, maintains anywhere from a 4 to 12 frame per second lead above the 1080 Ti and the 3060 Ti. Alright, now that the game testing is done, let's talk about the results. This is by no means an exhaustive and all-encompassing benchmark test for this GPU comparison. What I can say though is that at 1080p, the 3060 Ti is a very good card. It is, however, not a good card for an upgrade if you already have a 1080 Ti or a 2080 Super. I would recommend you stick with what you have, unless of course your budget allows for something like a 3070, a Ti, or a 3080 if you can get your hands on one. This is of course a hard sell, considering this card is going for around a thousand dollars right now, which is completely ridiculous. And I don't mean from eBay or some other scalping network, this is directly from Newegg. Shame on you, Newegg. What kind of crap is this? It's bad enough with the shortages that scalpers are taking advantage of the situation, that Newegg is doing it too. It needs to stop. On the one hand, it's great that they're giving people the opportunity to purchase a card if they manage to get picked in the Newegg shuffle. On the other hand, they're charging just as much as scalpers, and making the situation worse than it has to be. Alright, enough of the soapbox. Now let's move on to some thoughts that I've had during this benchmark run. I think it's interesting that even though the 1080 Ti is two generations old, and it's running on GDDR5X at 11,000 MHz, it's actually keeping up with the 3060 Ti, and in some cases the 2080 Super, with their much faster GDDR6 at 14,000 MHz and 15,500 MHz. I think this is due to the 1080 Ti actually using a 352-bit bus versus the 256-bit bus on both the 2080 Super and 3060 Ti. And even though a couple of times the 3060 Ti was overtaken by the 1080 Ti, I think at 200 watts, this card is actually performing fairly admirably. This card specifically uses one 8-pin power connector, so overclocking will be limited to a maximum theoretical 225 watts, but it's still keeping up with the 1080 Ti and the 2080 Super at their shared 250 watt power limits. That's nothing to scoff at. So that's it for this comparison, but this is not the end of the fight. The 1440p and 4K videos will be coming out shortly, and I think you'll all find the results as interesting as I do. And for anybody wondering, yes, there will be ray tracing videos. So keep your eyes open for those videos. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this, found it useful, please hit those buttons. 
that would really help my channel grow and help this community grow. Have a great day, and I'll see you on the next video. The 2080 Super, on the other hand, it, the 2080 Super, on the other hand, maintains a 4 to about 12%. Uh,